With all these games constantly coming out of the market, something's got to happen to catch my attention. It's got to be something special. And this one I'm talking about today, it was the box cover. The box cover drew me in. Is the game good enough to match the cool graphic design? I don't know. Let's talk about Paper Tales. In Paper Tales, you're earning legend points as you build the history of your glorious kingdom along with the historical people and creatures that helped you mold it. The recruitment phase begins the round as players are dealt five cards. You then draft a five card hand by selecting one and passing your hand to the player next to you. You continue until you've drafted five cards. Then in the deployment phase, you will play the cards into your kingdom paying their cost. These cards have special abilities, monetary income, and can produce resources that are used to construct buildings later in the round. And now it's time to go to war with your neighbors. You count the strength of all the cards in the top row of your kingdom and compare them to the players to your left and right. If you equal or exceed their total, you gain three points for each. After the wars have been fought, your kingdom will now generate income. These cards will give you coins that are used most often to deploy cards. In the construction phase, you can either construct a building by using the resources your characters are producing, or you can upgrade a building to its second level. Buildings will score you legend points as well as provide you with ongoing abilities. Then finally, your characters and creatures will age. If any of your characters have age tokens on them, they'll pass away and be discarded. Then place an age token on each of the cards in play. Throughout each of these six phases just described, many of the cards you bring into play will have abilities that trigger during those phases. After four rounds of play, the player with the most legend points will be the most prosperous and glorious kingdom ever to stand the test of time. Well, I'm just gonna start off and say I love this game. I think it's a really good game. It's really elegantly designed. The whole package, I mean, the artwork and, and graphic design are great. I love that stuff. But game design is elegant here. It feels like everything flows together so well. Uh, it's very intuitive gameplay. And the iconography is not hard to figure out. And you have a little player aid that shows you everything. And there's not that many icons. But after a round of the game, you just intuitively know how everything operates. Uh, the, the game is very deep, though, when it comes to a filler game. This is essentially a filler game. And normally I would think, you know, the filler game sounds like a derogatory term to me. You know, it feels like the fluff in between the two real games you're going to play. Filler in between. That's not the case. Uh, my definition for filler games, there's two, two things, two criteria. It has to be under 30 minutes and it has to be super easy to teach. This hits both of those. And... There's depth of gameplay for a game under 30 minutes. It feels good to play. There's a lot of hard choices. And those hard choices come in with the fact that you start the game with only four slots that you're gonna put cards in. And you have to make decisions as to how you're gonna use those four spaces. And in the second, third, and fourth turns, it gets even harder because you have to decide whether you're gonna keep the four cards or five after you open that fifth slot. You're going to keep those cards or you're going to get rid of them to put new ones in their places. So it becomes very difficult to decide how you're going to build your engine. And yes, this is an engine building game, but it's like a short term engine where the engine's going to go away because those characters age and die off or you fire them to put new things in. So it is a short term engine building game. And I dig that any filler game that has engine building in it and it feels like fairly robust engine building feels good to me. I like the way this game works. And the pacing of the game is great too. Everything is simultaneous. Everybody's playing all the time. You know, every phase of the game through drafting all the way to the end, it's all simultaneous. And what's interesting about the game is the drafting phase in the beginning is where all of the game is. That is the meat. You're deciding, essentially programming your entire turn. You're drafting those cards, deciding what your strategy is going to be, what engine you're going to build or how you're going to enhance the engine you already have, all in that draft phase in the very beginning. It's beautiful. And because everybody's doing it simultaneously, obviously drafts usually are, the game just feels like it flows well through because every other phase after that is just resolution dealing with the stuff that you played. Wonderful. Love that. Now, the two things I have against this game are, number one, maybe it's even a little too short. I feel like at the end of the game, rounds, the four rounds, I want more. Now, usually you would say that's a good thing, right? Like it leaves you wanting more. 
you want to play again. And yes, I want to play again every time, but I almost feel like I just want to keep doing what I'm doing. I want to use the engine. I want to keep like building upon it and like evolving it over time. Maybe if it were like two more turns, I would feel a little better. Uh, four terms, it always feels like I'm just scratching by and I want to do more and then it's over. Not a bad thing because it gives it that good 30 minute play time, but I'm always left with wanting more. So maybe that's a good thing that it always makes me itching to play it again. Uh, and the second thing is, this is just personal. When games are always simultaneous, when everybody's playing simultaneously, it feels like it loses something to me. I kind of feel like when it's my turn, I like my turn and it feels more robust when you have your own turn. When it's simultaneous, it feels like what the game is, resolution all the way until the end. Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense, but for some reason, it's I'm just trying to get out of my head what I feel about a fully simultaneous game like that. But nonetheless, beautiful components, beautiful artwork. Gameplay is very well done. There is some depth to this game. There's a lot of hard choices during that drafting phase, and it's just a good game. This is one of my go-to filler games right now. I'm, I'm keeping it on the shelf, ready to go. Whenever we need 30-minute games, bam, this one's coming out. I like it a lot. Paper Tales is top. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.